This small stack may not look like much, but if you tried to put it in the back of your car, you'd blow out the tires. There are a lot of guns here right now. It's, uh, it's kind of nerve-wracking to be around it. The gold is met at the loading dock by the Fed's vault auditor and its custodians. We have over a ton of gold right here, and street value today is over $55 million. Are you still into gold? Like, does gold have an effect on you emotionally, or are you sick of gold? You, you never get sick of the gold. Yeah, really? It puts a smile on people's faces when they come down to see it, yeah. and even puts a smile on our face when, when we're down there working with it. Just, it just never loses its luster. Our camera crew is making a normally smooth exchange a little hectic. They're obviously a little nervous about it because this is, this is a first. There's not a lot of hanging out with the gold just sitting here. After sorting out who's allowed to go inside with the cameras, they get down to the business of making the deposit. There's an almost sacred ritual that handlers go through when moving gold. It's all very quiet and solemn, no chit-chat or small talk. The armored truck company's drivers are fully responsible for the gold as they descend 80 feet below street level to the world's largest underground gold vault. Only at the entrance does it officially become the keep of the New York Fed. And this is the way it's been done since the Fed first opened the vault in 1924. The New York Bank is one of 12 that make up the Federal Reserve System. Together, they're like the ultimate piggy bank, a place where your bankers bank. And if there's a financial panic, the Fed acts as a lender of last resort. That creates a kind of trust in the entire system. So from the beginning, Fed banks were built to look imposing, like fortresses of money. The New York Fed's vault rests on bedrock to handle the weight of the gold. Engineers dreamed up an ingenious way to guard it. A 90-ton steel cylinder that revolves vertically in a 140-ton steel and concrete frame. When it rotates, it drops three-quarters of an inch to create an air and watertight seal. No one person is given all of the combinations or keys to the various locking systems, so someone is always watching. So now there's three of you. It takes three people to open the door? Yeah. I see. Two vault custodians and an auditor. Welcome to about a quarter of the world's official gold supply. Just one of these bars is worth 640,000 bucks. So we're talking upwards of $380 billion. The bars are weighed on a good old-fashioned balance scale. Once everything's on, yeah. you're going to turn the crank. Okay, okay. It's going to be a little, not that difficult, but a little bit, because all that weight will be on it. It's a critical step, because each bar is slightly different, making each deposit unique. The scale measures down to one one-hundredth of an ounce. That's about one-third of a paper bill. Still, that's worth about 17 bucks. Ron here has stood as guardian of the gold for 40 years. This is the year in which the bars were cast. This is the purity. And this is the maker of the bar, who the, the assayer. And this is a serial number. Each bar has to have its own serial number. What happens if you drop a bar like uh, this on your feet? Oh, if you don't have this on, you'll be in the hospital. Yeah, you yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, right. 
All right, so I'm about to pick up $640,000. That is a life-changing sum of money. Whoa, whoa. It is so much heavier than you think it's gonna be. Gold is very dense. Wow. So whose gold are we handling right now? Country, central bank. Do you know? I mean, can we tell from what? Oh, no, we, well, we can't tell. You can't tell me? No. I see. There are rules about that kind of thing. The Fed's discretion and intense security are so trusted that few depositors have ever even asked to see if their gold is still here. So let's say that, you know, one of these bars got out of the vault, God forbid, and out into the street, and somebody melted it down. Would there be any way of identifying this gold again? Not if they melted it down. No. But if they tried to sell it like this here, it, they would find out. For thousands of years, people used gold as money. And why not? It's shiny, it's pretty. And like the man said, once you melt it down, it's untraceable. Or put another way, it's the perfect recyclable money. One of the places where this precious metal is given new life is New York's Diamond District. On these two blocks of New York, $24 billion in cash changes hands every year. We've negotiated access to get behind the storefronts to see how everybody from low-end street dealers to high-end brokers are dealing in gold. Hello. Hello, how you doing, sir? Very good. Alexandra Rogovsky has a hefty chunk of that 24 billion inside his bag. Ah, uh, got some gold, got some silver bar. He has gold to sell, a lot of it, and he's about to find out what it's all worth. So I was wondering if you can tell me what I can get for this. Надо что, пускай тянут, реально пускай скажут сумму. Когда если, послушай, если они 14 берут, пускай тянут и три недели. Is this 14? Dmitry Nezhinsky is one of this hundreds of brokers who work New York's gold district. Business is booming. When there's a financial crisis, people tend to look for security in gold. Here is 18 carat. Yeah, it goes up and down. But now it's better than other times because it just came, came up from 1500, so you're selling it at the right time. In 2010 alone, the price of gold hit record highs 22 times. We pay top dollar for your gold. The gold comes in from all walks of life, so it helps that Dimitri can speak five languages. You come back here, okay? Some dates are there. Forty-eight, fourteen thousand and sixty-four dollars for fourteen carat gold. Then you have ten carat gold. I can give you eighteen hundred dollars for that. The coin. This coin is the pure gold, right? So this is $20,900, I'll give you $11 difference, so you can come back to us. Thank you very much. Dimitri? Yes, hi. hi. I'm Jake. Hi, how are you? Very nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, thank you for having me. Sure. And how, how much do you see in a day? How many people come through here? In a day, it depends. Uh, it could be anywhere from 5 to 50, 70 people a day. What happens to the gold once you've got it, right? You, bought, you buy a day's worth of gold. What do you then do with it? Once we buy gold, let's say we buy This is about $20,000, $25,000 worth of gold. Okay. Once we buy this gold, we melt it down to a small brick, and then we have it tested and sell it. Can I, can I watch you sure, melt it down? Definitely. I'd sure. like to see it. Now, most of the jewelry we have is 14 carat. The nooks and crannies of the gold district are full of places like this. Millions of dollars flowing in and out. Some, like Dimitri's, even have a foundry in the basement. How are you, my friend? No! Oh my god, you said this. It's the mayor of this guy. Please, man, I wanted to melt it. Not ready? Okay. It's kind of an amazing thing, right? This is, you know, people's memories, their treasured heirlooms, 
some of it was in the ground a thousand years ago, some of it was a pair of earrings a thousand years ago, and now it's all been melted back down again, and someday it will be somebody else's heirloom. It's crazy how liquid this really is. So, are you sick of gold? I mean, do you like, do you still like the look of gold? I love it. You do? I love it, yeah. You do? Yeah, definitely. Who doesn't? The gold that leaves here is recast and reborn as another person's treasure, continuing to make money along the way. <laughs> 